All right, so air resistance, uh, which is a specific type of what we call drag. Uh, drag just refers to the, the resistive force that you get when you're going through any fluid. Uh, remember from chemistry, uh, both gases and liquids are fluids, and so uh, when you're swimming, uh, you experience drag from the, the water. So instead of air resistance, you have like water resistance. Um, obviously, when you're going through the air, we have air resistance, and that's uh, just a specific type of drag. Uh, and so there's no, like, single uh, particular symbol you have to use here. Um, so, like, we could use F-A-R for air resistance. We could use F-D uh, for drag. Uh, some people write F-Air. Uh, you know, whatever. Just make sure it's clear what you're talking about. Um, so some observations we know about air resistance, um, air resistance is going to, uh, be how the air sort of resists the motion of something that's traveling through it. Uh, you may have observed air resistance in your everyday life. If you've ever just stuck your hand out the window of a car while it's driving down the road, um, so you can always feel the air, uh, well not always, but when you can feel the air, when you can feel the air resistance, you can feel it pushing in the opposite direction you're moving. So if the car is going forwards, uh, the air is pushing backwards. And so air resistance is gonna work a lot like friction as far as the direction goes. Uh, the direction uh, is always opposite. Uh, the motion of the object. Um, so if it's going forward, uh, the air resistance is going to be backwards. If it's going to the left, the air resistance is going to be uh, to the right uh, because what the air resistance is trying to do is trying to uh, slow down or stop a moving object. Uh, Some observations uh, about air resistance. Um, if you have your hand uh, outside the window of the car, so you've got you know your hand like just sitting upright like this, um, you may have felt that, or well, you probably noticed uh, that the faster the car is going, the more air resistance you feel. And so, uh, you know, if the car is just parked, you can just stick your hand out the window and it just sits there. But if the car starts to go fast, you start to feel your hand get pushed backwards. Uh, and if the car is going really fast, like at highway speeds, it might actually be uncomfortable to try to hold your hand out uh, because it's getting pushed backwards so hard. Uh, and so air resistance seems to increase based on speed. Uh, the other observation you might have made, uh, and this is something that we saw with the paper, uh, is that you can reduce your air resistance uh, by changing your shape so you don't hit as many air molecules. Uh, where the air resistance is actually coming from is when you stick your hand out the window, um, there's all of these air molecules that are just, you know, hanging out uh, in space in front of the car, and then as the car drives forward, your hand is hitting all of these air molecules, which are then pushing against your hand. Uh, and the faster you go, the more air molecules your hand has to push out of the way. And so the more air molecules you get hitting your hand, which is why uh, the higher the speed is, the more uh, force of air resistance we get. Um, but that's why you can take and change the shape of your hand uh, and actually change how much air resistance there is. So you might have noticed this if you... Uh, if you've ever stuck your hand out the window of a, of a moving car, uh, if you have your hand upright like uh, this, uh, your hand gets pushed back really easily. But if you flip your hand so it's flat, uh, it's a lot easier uh, for your hand to, to not get pushed backwards. And so you can sort of like, like surf your hand forward. And then if you flip your hand like this, you can feel it get pushed back really hard. And then if you flip it like this, it's easy to go forward again. Then if you flip your hand like this, the air resistance pushes your hand back. And so what's going on there is the, the surface area, not like the total surface area, but what we call the cross-sectional surface area. How much like two-dimensional space your hand is taking up uh, in terms of like um, 
you know, how many air molecules it's going to hit affects the air resistance. And so if we have a large surface area, that cross-sectional surface area that's determining how many air molecules we're going to hit, uh, that is uh, going to increase the air resistance. And so here, uh, if my hand is like this and the car is driving forward, I have the entire palm of my hand is my surface area uh, that the air molecules are going to hit. If I flip my hand like this and the car is going forward, now we just have this little surface area on the top of my hand that the air molecules can hit. And so it increases... Uh, with normal, we just call it the the area, um, but I'll maybe in parentheses here, uh, increases with the cross-sectional surface area of the object. Um, so as the area the object takes up uh, increases, the amount of air resistance we are going to incre uh, experience increases. Uh, and so this explains why uh, we generally can ignore air resistance. Um, air resistance only matters if you are going very, very, very fast. Or uh, if your object has a very high surface area, uh, relative to its mass, because we know that the less mass you have, the more effect a force will have on you. And so if you have a very small mass relative to your surface area, uh, the force from the air molecules hitting the surface of the object will have a significant effect on it. Uh, that is why when I dropped the sheet of paper, uh, we had a noticeable effect of air resistance. But if I had dropped a textbook, which has the exact same uh, cross-sectional area as a piece of paper, uh, we wouldn't see a big effect um, because the textbook has significantly more mass. Uh, and so that same force of air resistance from the same number of molecules hitting it isn't going to have the same effect on it. Um, so I'll put that on the bottom here. Uh, so we only need worry about air resistance or drag in general if going very fast or uh, our object has uh, a large surface area to mass ratio. Uh, so things like a feather, a leaf, a piece of paper, etc. Stuff like that. Um, yeah, and so we're going to look at some examples uh, today of situations where, uh, you know, that air resistance is going to start to come into play, either because we have objects going very fast uh, or because they have a very, very large surface area. Um, in general, this is sort of the rule that you need uh, to know, so you don't need to worry uh, in, in a lot of cases too much uh, about the, the details of this. Um, for just general problem solving, figuring out, like, do you need to account for air resistance at all? Um, remember, the two most significant factors on air resistance are the speed and the surface area of the object. And if you don't either have a very, very large speed or a very large surface area relative to your mass, you don't have to worry about it. Um, that said, uh, there is a more uh, complete definition of air resistance or a way to calculate drag rather than just this sort of uh, hand wavy, is it going fast or does it have a large surface area? Uh, and so that is uh, this is the, the full uh, drag equation. Uh, and so this applies to the drag force from, from any fluid, doesn't just need to be air. Uh, so the drag force uh, is equal to one-half, uh, a constant uh, indicated by a capital C, uh, times rho, uh, which looks, so it's a Greek letter, it looks sort of like P, but it doesn't have the little... Uh, 
little thing right there. It's just like a single loop. Uh, a, V squared. Uh, and so a couple of these symbols should look familiar. Uh, so FD, uh, that is the space to do this. Uh, so FD is just the, the drag force. Uh, A is that cross-sectional surface area that we were talking about. Uh, v, of course, is the speed. Uh, and so we can see uh, two of the things uh, that we know matter showing up uh, right away. Um, and you'll notice that speed is squared, and so speed is actually even more significant than the air resistance. Um, the uh, drag force uh, increases with the square of the speed. Uh, this is why your gas mileage drops so quickly at high speeds. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you, if you are going 30 miles an hour... Uh, versus 60 miles an hour, uh, 30 squared uh, is four times smaller than 60 squared. Uh, and if you try to go, uh, you know, 90 miles an hour, uh, 90 squared, because it's always got this squared relationship, is significantly larger. Uh, and so uh, when you're driving, if you're driving your car, uh, not that you ever should drive your car at 80 or 90 miles an hour, uh, but there, there's a noticeable uh, effect of air resistance uh, just on the car. And it makes it, it makes it hard for the car to speed up after a certain speed. Um, these other two factors are things that are going to uh, also affect our air resistance, um, but are sort of, uh, I don't want to say secondary. Uh, the, okay, let, let's, okay, so rho uh, is talking about what the material uh, is. Uh, so rho is is the density of the material. And let me just let me just say that I let me just make sure I get this right. Um, do, do, do. Yeah. So rho is the density of the fluid. Uh, remember I said you could have drag when you're going through any fluid, uh, and so the higher the density is, uh, that's meaning there's going to be more molecules or there's going to be uh, more mass in your molecules uh, per, um, you know, cubic meter of air that you sweep out. Uh, and so this is why, uh, like uh, I said, you get drag from water as well. You notice uh, water resistance, like if you're just at the beach and you try to run uh, through even a relatively shallow uh, amount of water, you notice the resistance uh, is significantly higher than the resistance you get from the air molecules. Uh, and that's because the water molecules just have a significantly larger number of kilograms of water molecules uh, per cubic meter uh, than you know air has because the air molecules are significantly further apart. Uh, and so we really don't need to worry about this uh, row um, usually over the course of a problem because your fluid's not changing. Um, but as far as figuring out, like, is this a situation where uh, it's going to matter if I have any sort of resistance or anything, if you're going through a denser fluid like water, uh, you don't have to be going as fast to notice resistance. Uh, and then the last thing, C, uh, some of you might have thought, you know, it's not the entire story to just think about the surface area because we have this concept of, of what we call like aerodynamics, uh, something that is the, you know, you know like a car, uh, generally, you know, all cars are relatively similar in size, but if you change the shape of like the hood and other parts, uh, you can make it easier for the car to, uh, you know, accelerate and not get slowed down by the air. And that's because the shape of the object also matters. Uh, and that is what is encoded by this constant C, uh, which is called the drag coefficient. Uh, and so that's just, it's a, it's a number, um, I think, I think it's from zero to one. Um, 
been a long time since I took my fluid mechanics engineering courses. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a number that is going to describe how aerodynamic something is. And so uh, drag coefficient uh, describes how aerodynamic the object is. Um, and so uh, you can see uh, the way this works, uh, the, the lower this is, uh, the lower our drag force is going to be. And so a more aerodynamic object is going to have a lower drag coefficient and a less aerodynamic dynamic object is going to have a, a larger drag coefficient. Um, this equation uh, in full is not on your AP equation sheet. Uh, and anything that is not on your AP equation sheet and is not a sort of like fundamental relationship, like velocity is displacement over time. I don't think that's actually on the AP equation sheet, but it is so fundamental to physics that you need to know it. This, this comes up like in this one specific case uh, where we're looking at this one particular force. We don't need it for a lot of problem solving. And so this equation is not something you need to memorize. Um, however, uh, if it shows up in your problem set, um, you know, this would be something you could refer back into uh, the chapter and something you should be able to work with uh, on the problem set where you have access to the textbook or on the AP test. If during like a free response question, if they gave you this equation, uh, you should certainly still be able to work with it and interpret it. Um, so all the things we talked about, like recognizing that the drag coefficient, uh, the smaller that is, the more aerodynamic the object must be. Um, that should be something that you should be able to recognize uh, just based on how the equation works. Uh, you know, whether it's for this equation or some new equation that you've never seen, just using that sort of mathematical reasoning to understand what's going on. Uh, seeing that our speed is squared uh, means that speed is going to be the thing that has the, the biggest effect um, because it basically counts twice. Um, and so, you know, you should be able to use the equation if someone gives it to you, um, but you don't have to worry about memorizing it. Um, and because it's not in the AP equation sheet, uh, you know, you can generally assume that you're not going to need to use this on the AP uh, test unless they give it to you. Uh, however, while the details are not required on the AP test, this basic stuff, uh, this is just a fundamental part of problem solving. Uh, and so when you are just doing a forces problem, this basic recognition about which sorts of objects do we care about air resistance for that is something that you do need to do. And if you're drawing a free body diagram on the AP test, they would expect you to recognize if it is a, if it is a feather that is floating to the ground, something that has a very large surface area relative to its mass, they would expect you to recognize that air resistance is important. Add that to the free body diagram and include that uh, uh, in your explanation of what is going on.